Hi everyone, it's Stephanie here and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be using the Gina K Wreath Builder along with a bunch of different stamp sets to create some fall theme cards. This is one of my favorite ways to make a bunch of different cards for a specific occasion because you can put your panels into your Misty with your Wreath Builder template and you can stamp multiple panels at once. So I've picked out a bunch of different fall themed stamps and I will have all of these linked in the video description below. And what I was looking for was fall themed images that were kind of small so they would work in a wreath formation. So I was kind of looking for leaves and acorns. I found a mushroom I thought I would like. So I took all of those little stamps and I removed them from my stamp sheets and I'm gonna put them here beside my Misty in just a minute. Now I have the wreath builder template in my Misty and I've used some repositionable tape to hold it in place just so it doesn't move while I'm doing my stamping. And I'm using the larger one so that I can use four inch squares to stamp my images on. So what I'm doing is I'm picking out a kind of a larger stamp out of all the ones I have beside me there to kind of start the wreath off. So I have this leaf image from the Piles of Fun stamp set. And I'm just gonna go ahead and stamp this onto my paper and then quickly rotate my panel in my wreath builder and that's going to stamp this evenly around in a circle formation. So I am gonna speed it up a bit, but I'm going to leave all of the stamping in here so that you can see how quick and easy it is to kind of rotate that panel and just keep stamping that image over and over until you have it completely around in that circle form. So once I get this fully stamped onto the panel, I'm gonna quickly clean off that stamp and I'm gonna remove it from my Misty so that I can add a new one to the wreath. So I like to just find another image that's going to fit into some of the open space and then just go around and stamp that as well. So here I have a little pumpkin and instead of stamping this one continuously all the way around, I actually rotated the panel twice in between each stamping. And what that did is it allowed me to stamp the pumpkin four times and then in the open areas that I didn't stamp, I did that little acorn stamp. And that's just a great way to kind of break up the images if you don't wanna have that many of the same. So I finished that first wreath and set that one aside and then I jumped right into a second wreath here so you can see I've already done a bunch of stamping, but I'm just doing the exact same thing and picking out some different images. This one I wanted to make a lot more full, so I put a lot of smaller images together to really fill in that wreath. And now I'm gonna do a third one here, and this one I'm going to do with the least amount of stamping. So I kinda of wanted to show you the difference between doing minimal stamping, a little bit more on the second one, and then the third one with a lot of stamping. So I stamped out those three panels, and now I'm gonna go ahead and do all of the coloring. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color each image one time just to show you the colors I'm using, and then I'm gonna go off camera and finish coloring in all of these little images. Since they are small, it does take a little bit of time to do the coloring. When I did my stamping, I used Extreme Black Ink, which is a Copic-friendly ink, so now I can easily color with my Copic markers and color in all of these different images. Going with a fall theme, I wanted to use some really earth tone colors, so I'm using some deep orange shades for the pumpkins. I usually like to go with really bright oranges for my pumpkins, but for this kind of card, I wanted to keep it really muted down. I still wanted to have the rich, vibrant color, but I didn't want to have it super bright. I'm coloring in some of the leaves with brown just because it is a fall themed card, and then I am throwing in a little bit of green leaves as well, even though I kind of want to give the impression of changing leaves. I did want to have some pops of green in there with the other colors. Since the images that I'm coloring are relatively small, I'm not doing a lot of shading unless I'm working on some of the larger images. So for the pumpkins, I did use three colors, and for this acorn here, I used three shades of brown. But for the most part, I used just two colors and just kind of added the first color, which is the lighter color, and then just brought in the darker color for a little bit of contrast and shading. So for the yellow here, I'm using a Y17 and a YR14, which have more of an orange tinge to them. I wanted those to be muted as well. I am using kind of an olivey green set of colors for this other leaf here. And then for the last leaf, I did want to add a little pop of red. I didn't want to have it super bright, but I wanted to have some red in there. So once I get this pumpkin colored, which is going to be the same colors that I used on the first wreath that we colored, I'm going to bring in an R05, which is kind of a orangish red color. And then I'm going to add a little bit of darker red on top of that just to kind of deepen it up a little bit. And then that is going to bring in the orange, the red, and the yellow, which I really wanted to incorporate. And then we also have the greens and the browns just to break up those brighter colors. Okay, so moving on to the final wreath here, the only thing I'm gonna color on this one is the little mushroom, which I'm gonna use the same colors I used for the leaf on the previous one. I did wanna have these kind of a bright red, and then for the bottom area, I'm just using some cool grays to add a little bit of shading because I want those to appear white. And now that I have that done, you can see I've pretty much colored all of the images at least once. So I'm gonna go off camera and finish all of the coloring. So now you can see with everything colored, you really see the difference with the wreath that has just a little bit of stamping versus the one all the way at the other end that has a lot of stamping. The colors really bring it to life and I love how these look when they're finished. 
So the last thing we need to do is add some sentiment. I have a bunch of cardstock pieces over to the left that we're going to use to mat our panels and add them to a card base. But for the sentiments, the first one here I'm gonna do is an actual stamped sentiment that says find joy in everyday blessings from the cheerful blessing stamp set. And that one I stamped directly onto the panel because I was able to because I had enough room in the center of the wreath. That's one of the benefits of using less images is that you don't have as much stamping in the center area so you can easily stamp a sentiment. Now for these two here, I didn't really feel like I had enough room, so I decided to create some sentiment strips. So for the sentiments, I'm gonna be using the Biddy Thanks and Gratitude stamp set, which is one of my all-time favorites. It has so many great sentiments that are thank you themed. And I'm gonna be stamping these on to colored cardstock with Versamark ink so that I can emboss them with white embossing powder. So for the green, I have Jelly Bean Green, and for the orange, I have Tangy Orange, which are deeper muted colors. These are gonna go really nicely with the coloring that we did on the wreaths. So I stamped out those images, I added the white embossing powder, and then I heat set these off camera and also die cut them with the Skinny Strips Dynamics. So now I have two of these little sentiment strips that we can add to our panels. Now we can start assembling all of the cards since we have all of the pieces ready to go. So the first thing I'm doing is adding the stamped panel to the cardstock mat, which is the colored piece. And I'm just using liquid glue to quickly add glue to the back of this and then position it onto that cardstock piece. And the three colors I have are Poppy, which is a bright red that I wanted to go with the mushrooms on that first one. For the second one here, I wanted to use the same green color that we used for those larger leaves. So I'm using Jelly Bean Green, which is also the same thing that I use for the sentiment strip. And then for the last one, we're using the Tangy Orange, which goes really nicely with those large pumpkins. I'm adhering the green sentiment strip to the card with some foam adhesive just to give it a little bit of added dimension and I'm kind of positioning it down towards the bottom area of the wreath. We are going to add some clear droplets to these when they're done so we'll fill in some of that white space in the center. And then for the other one, I decided to trim up the sentiment strip. I didn't wanna keep it in the fishtail formation so I trimmed both ends of that and added it directly to the card base. Now we have those finished, we can add our finished panels to our card bases, which are all craft card stock, and all of these measure four and a quarter inches square. So they still fit into a normal A2 size envelope, even though these are smaller square cards. So here's a closer look at the finished cards, and you can see that there's a bunch of little dot stamps kind of in between all of the leaves and the pumpkins. I did that to fill in some of the white space, and I just used a small dot stamp from the Color Drop stamp set, and also a cluster of dots from the Painted Petal stamp set. So it's just a great way to quickly and easily fill in some white space if you find that you still have some areas that you wanna fill in. I added the clear droplets and now our cards are complete. I hope this gave you some ideas on ways that you can use the Wreath Builder templates with a bunch of small stamps for any occasion. Just kinda of go through your supplies and see what you have and mix and match all of those stamp sets to create some really fun, unique wreaths. Thanks so much for joining me for today's video. As always, I appreciate you being here and I hope to see you again soon.